here we're going to be discussing uh, the first group of the periodic table, group one, the alkali metals. Okay, so if we look at our periodic table, our alkali metals are the very first group we have, um, and the ones we need to know about are lithium, sodium, and potassium. Although the uh, properties and trends we discussed will continue if you go further down as well. So these um, elements are all in group one. In our periodic table, we call them the alkali metals. They are all very soft metals. In fact, they're so soft that we can cut them all just with a um, sharp knife. They also have a very low melting point compared to most metals. So they are solids at room temperature, but we don't need to provide much heat to actually melt them. Okay, the main thing we need to know about these is how um, our alkali metals react with water. So when we do this reaction, um, we normally have a nice big trough of water, plenty of water in there, um, and you also need to have a safety shield or safety screen in front of this uh, for safety reasons. Because um, the metals are reactive and some of the products you make um, are not very nice. So obviously you're going to wear goggles, you're going to have a safety shield. You may well be asked about safety features on the exam. So when we um, drop the uh, metals onto the water, they're all going to float on the surface. They've all got quite a low density and they're all going to react. And we need to know the um, trend or be able to describe the pattern of how they react. So the first one, lithium. Okay, we simply see this um, uh, fizz or F of S um, giving off bubbles of hydrogen gas. Um, it will move around the surface of the water. Um, and that is about it. Okay, with our next one, um, sodium, we get slightly more. Um, energetic, more vigorous reaction. It is going to fizz again. Okay, In fact, both of these properties um, are true, just like before. This time, the sodium also melts into a ball. So you would see a little, um, little silvery ball of sodium fizzing away and whizzing around the surface of your water. Okay, so has the same, uh, roughly the same, uh, uh, well, you would see the same thing as lithium. You'd see fizzing or effervescence. It would move around, but it also melts into the ball. Finally, with potassium, we um, also see a um, the burning of a lilac flame. It actually gives off enough heat energy as this reaction um, progresses to ignite the hydrogen that comes off. And we see... Um, our uh, piece of potassium burning with a lilac -y, um purple flame as the hydrogen it gives off ignites. Now in all of these reactions, um, we they follow a similar pattern in terms of their um, react, uh, re in terms of their products. So I'm just going to take sodium as one example. The metal we start with is just sodium. We are reacting it with water H2O. In this reaction, every time. Um, we're going to get hydrogen gas given off, H2. Um, and the product that's produced, that is left over um, and dissolves in the solution, is always a metal hydroxide. Okay, In this case, it would be NaOH. But if you were to use lithium, it would be LiOH. Potassium would be KOH. Okay? So we make a strongly um, alkaline substance. So you could prove that what you make is alkaline if you put a few drops of universal indicator into your water, um, it will turn purple. But remember that the water will not turn purple unless you have the indicator there. Okay, so sodium hydroxide which dissolves in water is, is an alkaline, is an alkali because it dissolves in water, um, but the water doesn't go purple without the universal indicator. Um, we need to balance this equation. What have we got? We have got three hydrogens on this side and two here. Let's put a two there. Um, we're therefore going to need a 2 here and a 2 there. Okay, So you could get asked about this equation. Um, key thing to remember is that you produce sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and hydrogen gas. Right, for higher tier, we also need to be able to explain why 
these um, elements seem to get more reactive as they go down um, group one. Okay, so I'm going to put a um, purple hyater only box up here. Okay, if I were to draw the uh, atomic structure of lithium, which has got three electrons, um, I'm just going to, in fact, I'm going to put an Li at the bottom. I'm just going to show the nucleus of this atom as a plus. Obviously, it will have uh, protons and neutrons in there, but I'm just going to show it as a plus. In my first shell of electrons, I'm going to have two electrons, and in my second shell, I'm going to have one. Sodium, the, the um, next element down, because it is a period below lithium, it has got an extra um, electron shell. So it's got 11 electrons in total. The first two in the first shell. It's got eight in the second shell. And it's got a single electron in that third and outer shell. Okay, you see in the uh, pattern here, potassium has got a, a yet another electron shell. So it's going to go two, eight, eight, and finally one. Okay, so I've got a really big atom this time. Okay, and there are two factors, um, two factors at work here, which mean that potassium is much more reactive than lithium. Factor number one is the um, distance of the outer electron from the nucleus. Okay, so when these three elements react, they all want to lose this outer electron. Okay, they want to get rid of this this um, electron from the outer shell, so they can get um, a, a well an empty outer shell, and that will make them stable. In lithium, the distance from that positively charged nucleus and its outer electron is relatively small. This means you've got a positive charge that is quite close to this negatively charged electron, so the force of attraction between them is quite large. Um, so it's, it's quite difficult for something to come along and try and um, pull this negative charge away. In sodium, the distance between the positively charged nucleus and the outer electron is slightly larger. So the force, uh, electrostatic force between these is a bit weaker. So this electron is more easily lost. For potassium, it has got the largest distance of the three between the outer electron and the nucleus. Therefore, the force of attraction between these is weaker. Um, so the electron is even more easily lost. Okay, so factor number one that we need to be able to talk about is the distance of outer electron from the nucleus. Okay, the second factor is called shielding. Okay. So not only is the outer electron in potassium further away from the positively charged nucleus, you also have a lot more electrons between that nucleus and the outer electrons. Okay, So we say that these um, inner shells here, or these inner electrons, are going to shield this outer electron from the uh, positive charge of the nucleus. What this means is that the outer electron sees, if you like, less of that positive charge from the nucleus, so again, the force of attraction is weaker and this electron is more easily lost. For lithium, you do not have anywhere near as much shielding. The electron is much closer. There was only one shell um, between the outer electron and the nucleus. So the outer electron sees more of that positive charge and it's harder for something to come and rip that electron away. So lithium is less reactive than sodium and potassium.